Okay, so welcome to another episode of Modular Landing. This is the Beginner's Mind series. So we're going to be doing things in a very basic way. Apologies to those of you who are more sophisticated in your modular endeavors. Here we're just going to do some really basic things with sequencers and look at sequencers um, and the role they play in synthesis, particularly modular synthesis. And we're going to look at two synthesizers. First is um, the Rene by Make Noise, which is a modular synth um, unit sequencer. It's one. Of, it's my favorite sequencer, actually, in modular format, just because it's crazy and does a lot of, kind of strange and wacky things. And it's a bit unpredictable, actually, which is something I like about it, because um, I tend to do more experimental stuff. But uh, we're also going to look at a very standard um sequencer and that's the Korg SQ1. Now this is not fully modular, it's a standalone unit you can see, but it's made for use with CV units. It's got all these CV outputs here, CV and gate. Uh, two CV outs and two gate outs. Um, so it's great for modular and the advantage of this little baby is that it's battery powered, it's small portable and it's very cheap. So um, a lot of people like this. It's a great inexpensive option for getting a cheap synthesizer, a cheap sequencer to use with your modular. Um, and it doesn't even take up space in your rack, which is great. So definitely worth checking out. Now, uh, we're not going to use these units to the best of their capabilities. We're going to use them in a very dumbed down basic way, just to illustrate a few points. So what is a sequencer? Well, in its, in its simplest form, a sequencer sends a sequence of note information uh, to uh, other parts of your system which actually generate the sound. So sequencer doesn't generate any sound. It generally just sends CV and gate information. So changes in control voltage in gate would be used to open and close an, an amplifier uh, envelope generally. And um, the CV would generally be used to send pitch information to an oscillator, although we can use that CV to, to send anything, because remember, the language of synthesis, analog synthesis, is all just changes in control voltage. And even what we call a gate is really a CV signal because it is a change in control voltage. It's just something that opens and closes, basically. So it's a simple form of control voltage as opposed to what, what we would call CV here, which could send you know, different types of pitch information. So, um, so we will start with the Rene. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Pamela's workout as our clock source. And I've got that set to 82 beats per minute. It's got this knob, you could put it up or lower. I'm just gonna start with 82. And I've got one trigger output coming to the X clock of the Rene, which moves it along the sequence left and right. Uh, only these two steps are turned on, so it's just gonna bounce between these two steps. These knobs um, change the CV out. And this is a CV output. And there's also a gate output, which means every time it changes a step, it's gonna send out a pulse through that gate, right? Now, what should we trigger with that? Well. Uh, let's show something really basic first, just for kicks. Uh, we're just going to use a standard oscillator, so this will be so basic. Okay, so we'll take the CV out, and where do we want to put that? Into our one volt per octave input for the Dixie. Take our gate out, and where do we want to put that? We need to put that into our VCA, our voltage controlled amplifier into the control input, which can open and close the gate every time it gets a gate from the Rene, okay? So, um, if we start this now, okay, this is sending a, um, I'm gonna disconnect this here, we don't need it. This is sending a, a trigger out at this tempo between these two steps. CV is going to the Dixie, gate is going out to the Optimix, but we have nothing else connected, so of course we're not getting any sound. So we need to have um, the Dixie sending its output. We're going to choose, let's choose the pulse wave output into the input of our VCA. 
then we need to take the output of our VCA, send that to some output, okay? I'm gonna send it into my delay unit, but the delay is off. Oh, I thought the delay was off. change this, this is the pitch. Okay, so nice, boring. Let's stop that. Um, now let's use a different sound source. So instead of using the Dixie, let's use this stereo triggered sampler. So this has different samples in different banks. Okay, and um, we're going to take the gate output. Um, and we're going to use that on the play input of the sampler. Okay, so now when it triggers, it's going to, instead of opening the envelope, it's just going to trigger a, a, a sample. Okay, it's always playing the same sample. We could use the CV to control which sample it plays. So we take the CV output of this, we put this into sample CV input, and now it's adjusting this sample knob by this control voltage to play different samples. So when this is down, it's hitting the kick drum. When it's up, it's hitting the snare drum, okay? Now we have the output here going into our dual looping delay, which is a delay unit. So we throw some delay on that. Now, notice that the, the delay is in time, which is nice. So that's a cool effect. Why is the delay in time? Because I took actually another output from the clock. I did this earlier which is why it's still working, but I take it another output from the clock and I put it into the ping input, which is a, basically a tempo input or sync input of the dual looping delay, so that these two are synced. So the clock information going to my sequencer is also synced to my delay, which means theoretically if I speed up or slow down my clock, this should stay in sync. Let's see if that works. You hear how the delay is staying in sync? That's because they're clocked. So that's the advantage of, of having a clock and then splitting that clock out to your sequencer and to your delay and to anything else that you want synchronized, right? Let me put that back to 82 beats per minute. Now let's say I wanted some kind of melody going along with this, right? So I need an, I'm gonna use another sequencer for the melody. So I'll use this sequencer, the Korg SQ1, to control my Dixie, right? So I want to take the CV out from the cork, put that into the one volt per octave of the Dixie. I want to take the gate output from my se this sequencer, put it into the Optimix's uh, control input, which is going to open and close this voltage controlled amplifier letting the sound in and out, okay? And then I need to have this output from the Optimix, the VCA, going into another channel of the digital looping delay, which is going to my output, okay? This sequence is not started yet. Now what these lights do is they turn on and off steps of the sequence, they're all on right now, and these, that's what these buttons do, and these knobs control the pitch. So if I start this sequence, and this controls the speed. Now, right now, my melody sequence is not in time with my little drum sequence. So how do I fix that? Well, I want to take another output from my clock, right? 
and I want to put that into the sync input here of this sequencer. Okay? And now, I don't know if you can see this, but this is blinking at the speed of this output, right? And you notice this one's going really fast, this is going slow. I could sync it to the slower one. These are all different divisions from this basic tempo. So this clock allows me to create different patterns that are all in sync with this basic tempo. So let's say I use the slower one. Okay, now this is bop, 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 playing like that. If I hit play, what I did just now is I, I was turning this knob down to attenuate the signal of the gate coming in so that it is opening this voltage controlled amplifier but not as, not as much, not fully. If I had this fully open, you're going to hear it. But if I attenuate it and turn this down, you hear it, um, it doesn't open the gate as much. So that's, that's the basics um, of uh, just using two sequencers, one to control a kind of drum thing and one to control a, a melody. You could program a nicer bass line here to go with that um, to make it more musical. Um, but let's see what happens when we uh, use the power of modular and just like kind of go crazy a bit and start modulating different things and playing different things um, just to see what happens. Okay, so one thing that we can do is this 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 part is kind of boring right here. You know, and we're only using two steps of our sequencer. So sequencers have different number of steps. In an earlier video I showed using pressure points as a four-step sequencer. Uh, there are eight-step sequencers. These are both 16-step sequencers, meaning you can go 16 steps before the sequence repeats. Now there are ways that you can Play around with that and make a four step or eight step or 16 step sequencer act as if it has more than that number of steps um, but if you're just using it in its most basic function it would just have that number of steps so that's how many for example different notes you could send or different note values you could send before the sequence cycles back so let's use the rene we we have a clock coming in and advancing the sequence in this way but we can also have a clock go in on the y-axis, which is going to move it up and down. So let's see what happens when we use that. So we'll take another clock output from our time loss workout, put that into the y clock, okay? And um, let's change the input 
Let's uh, change where the central starting point is. Okay, so we've already got something a little bit kind of more interesting going on here, right? Which is kind of neat. Um, now, yeah, so we've got like, we're, we're keeping the beat, but we've got like, you know, the drummer's doing some interesting stuff. If we sped this up, I think it would sound kind of maybe more interesting. So let's increase the cross speed. We can change the starting position and length of each hit, we can modulate that. So there's a length fusion here. Generally, the easiest way to modulate other parameters is using an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, which sends a slow wave. So let's take, say, the sine output of this LFO from the Bakumi, and let's put it into the length CV. Okay, so this is slowly opening and closing the value here of the length. So you hear sometimes it's cut off and sometimes it's going fully out. Okay, so now we've already got like a much more interesting kind of drum thing going, right? soft um, output here. Um, so let's find something that might be interesting. Okay, that's a, whoa. Okay, that's a very interesting. Let's try that. Let me see. I'm playing with the pitching. Okay, I like that. That's interesting. But what I want to do is I want that pitch. I, I like the sound of that pitch input changing. Okay, 
so I don't have to keep turning this. And in the world of modular, we never turn things just by hand if we can modulate them with another part of the synth. So uh, let's uh, let's see if we can use maths to modulate that. Okay. So because we could just use an LFO from the Batumi. At, let's at first let's just do that. Let's for simplicity's sake just grab a saw saw wave from the Batumi. Put that into the pitch input here. Once I find it. Um, where is it? I definitely have a pitch. Oh, okay, it's called one volt per octave. Of course, I was looking for the word pitch, but in the world of modular, it's usually called one volt per octave. Um, so let's do that. Let's turn up the speed of that. Okay, and let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> The, the, the fluctuation of the pitch is huge. It's going from really low down to really, really high up. So what we want to do is we want to attenuate the range of that. So the signal that's coming in, if we saw it, you know, it's a saw wave that's going really high, coming down, going really high, coming down. We want to make the amplitude of that wave smaller. So what we can do is we can take the output, instead of going straight into the pitch input, we can throw it into a unit like maths. So I'm going to put it into channel three of maths, and this is an attenuverter for maths, right? If it's right in the middle, it's set at zero. Um, but if I put it slightly to the left, what it's gonna do is it's gonna attenuate that signal and decrease the amplitude of it, basically. So I take the output of maths then and um, uh, throw that into the one volt per octave and we should have a smaller range now. <laughs> okay, so you see how it's still going up and down, but the range is smaller. Um, let's try and make it even smaller. <laughs> If I remove that uh, attenue version and, uh, and 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 put it open it all the way up, you'll hear how the range gets bigger. <laughs> yeah, after I said that the range was too big, I actually <laughs> like the way it sounds better when it's opened up all the way. Uh, it's kind of a little funky that way. So we're just going to keep it. But that's an important thing to know, that a lot of times your signals that you're using to modulate, um, those control voltage signals are going to swing too much, and it's not going to be that musical. It's not going to be that interesting. And you can decrease the amplitude of that control voltage to make it more usable. And you can increase or decrease it however much you want. <laughs> Now let's add back this unit and see what happens. Okay, 
Okay, so thanks for watching, uh, and uh, see you next time.